On this episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, Kent went on vacation? And he got a haircut? I, I don't see the correlation between either one of those, but Amos has been bored. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 244 for Thursday, the 19th of March, 2020. Uh, happy birthday, Amber. This is her 20th birthday on the 2020, you, you know, you, you get the deal. Uh, this is the show where two lifelong guests uh, lifelong guests, and their hosts celebrate all things geek. Uh, that's kind of how it feels lately, I'll be honest, because these shows have been fairly sporadic just because timing and internet connection issues and... We've had a hell of a spring, dude. It's been it's it's been interesting. Oh, dude, yeah, shit's been crazy, man. So we didn't do a show a couple of weeks ago because, unfortunately, um, we had a sick cat that we had to put down. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a sad occasion. That was on a Thursday. So yeah, um, wasn't feeling up to podcasting that night. Um, and then last week I had some travel. Yeah, you were uh, you were at South by Nowhere. Uh, South by So Cancelled <laughs> what I dubbed it um, I decided to not cancel my plane tickets and um, yeah. uh, went and just hung out with some friends for a few days and uh, it was a good time yep. but it was interesting it was an interesting Uh, we call that an interesting glitch in the matrix because Kent is bugging out on the Skype. Of course, it would happen right after we start the uh, right after we start the stream. So, gosh, even when we get things going, we can't get things going right. And there he is. I think I think he's back. Yeah, he's back. All right. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> as I was saying. Welcome back uh, to the so Rich I, and Misery podcast. Uh, as as is our norm, we've had technical difficulties, this time not of our own control, probably. Maybe. We haven't troubleshot, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> you were saying South by So Cancelled was uh, very interesting. Or as our yeah. audience heard, it... Mm, <laughs> er. <laughs> yeah, so so Austin was interesting uh, because not only is this the first time that I've hung out in Austin without South by going on... Right. Um, but also, it was kind of um, it, it was interesting to not be at home when the apocalypse began, because <laughs> I was sitting in a bar watching TV, uh, eating some food, having a beer, when everything just started getting canceled. Not just South by, because that was already canceled, right? But they canceled March Madness, NBA canceled their season. Um, the, Tom Hanks announced that he had coronavirus. Like all of these things were coming across the news. I'm like, what in the fuck is? Yep. Oh my god! Like, so uh, I I had already can, after some some back and forth uh, with my finance manager, aka wife. We had some some uh, decisions to make, and then originally the decision was made that I wasn't going to go, and then mm-hmm. the next day it was made that I was going to go, that I was going to go anyway. Uh, because it was going to be too much of a hassle to change my plane tickets and it was going to cost us a bunch of extra money and everything else. Cause I was going to go to South by and then next week go to Vegas for a, uh, player showcase for the twin soccer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, the next day after that, so we're talking about three days in a row, <clears throat> the next day after that, it was canceled again this time because my wife is like, we, we, we need to do this and this and this. And basically the money fell out. Like, you know, it's family, yeah. family money. So uh, the money fell out and I was like, okay, cool. So I went online and ended up being able to rearrange my tickets just to go to Vegas f- with money coming back to me, which was awesome. Instead of it costing yes. me. I was like, holy shit. So things have turned. Cool. And then the next day they cancel Vegas. So Kent flies <laughs> like, out. I cancel, I cancel my tickets. The next day Kent flies out. The day after that, they cancel Vegas. So I have to go back and recancel all my tickets. I actually... I, I got my full purchase price for my original tickets as credit on my account now. So at least mm-hmm. there's that. Uh, they canceled the thing in Vegas and they just shut down McLaren airport. So yeah. Oh my God. Had I if gone to Vegas anyway? Yeah. If I had, I gone to Vegas anyway, I would not be able to get home right now. 
I didn't know they shut down the airport. Yeah. I know that Vegas was basically canceled. Like casinos are closed. No, like, no. They, they earlier today, I just saw it on Twitter pop up. They, the McCarran Airport is canceled, is closed, oh, turning down all flights. Don't fly into. Don't fly out of. So Vegas is shut down. Um, and I'd be stuck there right now if if I had gone had and gone to Vegas. Yeah. So I I changed my flight, my return <clears throat> flight. I came back a little bit early, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, they gave me money back. Usually. Usually, you know, it costs you an extra, you know, hundred bucks right. or something to change your flight. Uh, no, they were like, uh, "Okay, cool, you can have that time and date." Um, also, here's money. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. so now I have now I have credit on my yeah. on my Southwest account. Um, have has uh, has coronavirus been spotted in the Alamogordo area? No, uh, we've got a few confirmed cases. I don't know what the count is at right now. I, I, at least two. So we're we're in in uh, uh, plural scenario. But like uh, Santa Fe, I think is where the cases were. Uh, nowhere near me. That's in the northern part of the state. I am in right. the southern part of the state. Um, yeah, that is not the case where I am. We had our first confirmed case on J Bear today or yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yesterday. We have a total of nine people in Alaska now, and I'm only 40 miles away from the first case and the fifth and sixth cases. Yeah. So uh, nothing here in the valley yet, but again, Anchorage isn't is just a hop, skip, and jump away. Um, and yeah, it's getting uh, it's getting a little crazy, man. Um, how's your work schedule doing? Are you still going to work every day? <laughs> so. Uh, my office went to minimum manning. So mm-hmm. we were going to uh, split up like specialties. We would just kind of take turns going to work so that we didn't have a full office at any one time. Mm-hmm. All meetings canceled, things like that. Um, but when I woke up on Tuesday, uh, I had like four missed calls and a bunch of text messages from my office. And uh, because I was supposed to go back to work on Wednesday, yesterday. And um, I was like, oh, shit. All right. Let me let me call them and see what the fuck is going on. And they're like, you, you need to call public health. It's like, okay, uh, what's the number? So I call them and I, I told them, you know, what was going on. And they're like, uh, the, you know, they gave me the, the screening questionnaire. Like, where have you been? Have you knowingly come into contact with someone with uh, COVID-19? Are you experiencing this symptom? Are you experiencing this? You know, all of this sort of stuff. Yep. And they determined that since I was out of state in an international airport, that I am on limited movement, or no, I'm sorry, restricted movement, and uh, until the 31st of March, so 14 days of basically quarantine. Yeah, base. Yeah, so I'm wow. not like forbidden to leave my house, but I've been ordered to have limited contact with other humans, and uh, only leave the house if I if I feel like I really need to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, uh, you've got 35 confirmed in New Mexico, by the way. 35. Okay, 35. So, we're in so you're in the double digits. digits yeah. yeah. You're not just the pr- plurality. Yeah. 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 Uh, and by the time this episode's released, that number will probably be double or triple of that. Uh, who knows? Yeah. It's we kinda, we, ha- we had a news wild. We had a news conference where the health guy came on and said, well, how, how does it spread? Well, every week it doubles. So if you have one person this week, next week you'll have two people. Then the week after that, you have four. And then you'll have mm-hmm. eight. And then you'll have 16, and then that'll double to 32, and then you'll have 64, and then you'll have 128, and then you'll have mm-hmm. 256, and then after that, like by week eight, you'll have 512, and then that'll go to 10, uh, 1,024, and it just continues doubling. Like, dude, we got the fucking message when you started counting by. That's what I was about to say to you. That's what yeah. I was about to say. To no, you. I, and I, I did I know that, how math works. Yeah, I, I did that in, intentionally because that's how he presented it. But he did it much slower. I did a sped up version. Like he was still doing the math in his head, and he's not oh a computer dude or something. Like it was kind of ridiculous. Um, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So so yeah, I'm I'm on vacation, which is actually it, it, it's kind of nice because I can't really telework mm. because most of my work has to be done in the office. In, like in, I can check. Yeah, specific locations. Yeah, and I could check, uh, you know, we're, we're, Outlook for yeah. my my normal emails. Except um, I don't have a CAC reader, and plus I'm on a Mac, and for whatever reason I cannot connect to the the government website at all. It just says a, a secure connection cannot be established. Right. So it's I'm a, like, well, it, it says screw you because you don't have Internet Explorer. 
Yeah. So I'm like, well, okay, that's f- perfectly fine with me. So th- for the last couple of days, I've been just a madman around the house doing chores and projects and I'm getting so much done. Oh. This is wonderful. I, I kind of, I kind of a little bit worried for my job because when this, when this all is over and, and I'm supposed to go back to work, I might be like, no, nah. nah, man, <laughs> no, nah, I'm good. Like this is working out pretty well. No, I'm just gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to take all those sick days. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then, then my vacation time. And then I'm just going to, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. The last four days have had 15,000 cases each, at least, with a total of 70,000 cases in the last four days. Uh, 70, it actually ends up being like 78 or some shit like that. I did the math earlier. Um, but then so far today, they've only counted like a couple hundred. So today's like a lull. Mm. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the prevalence of tests available in the United States finally coming through because yep. Trump's a dipshit. Uh, yeah, well, that's an issue. Plus also like unreported cases, right? So yeah, like for example, um, it was like a month ago or something like that. I had what I'm, I'm pretty sure was the flu and I was out of work for like three days. I think I talked about this on the show already. Yep. Um, and like, I didn't go to the doctor, right? I just like called in sick. So let's say that I had had COVID-19. No one will ever know. <laughs> you right. know? Yep. Um, well, well, with all that being said, uh, if, if you are being affected by COVID-19 in a specific way that is not conducive to your lifestyle or whatever else, I mean, I'm sure mo- most of us are in some way or another, but if you're particularly harshly, um, faced with with uh, with coronavirus, then our sympathies are out to you. I'm not going to say hearts and prayers, uh, whatever, because that's stupid. Uh, thoughts and prayers. Um, but uh, yeah, it, we we understand it sucks, and we uh, we are sorry for whatever part we may have played in shaking your hand five years ago that caused you to have a vulnerability to some random virus no one knew about. Um. So other than that, dude, uh, South by like you got to see some people down there. I did, man. Um, so when I first got there, I, I kind of uh, so I had a roommate, uh, Curtis Larock, mm-hmm. wonderful, wonderful human being. So mm-hmm. uh, that was that was pretty nice to get to spend a few days with him. Um, but he got there the day after me, so I had the first day by myself, and I didn't make an effort to like reach out to anybody or really do a whole lot, except for one thing that I was really looking forward to doing, and that was getting a haircut. Mm. Now the reason that I waited until I got to Austin to do it is that Alamogordo is a fucking wasteland of good places. Oh, full stop, full stop. (laughs) But in particular, (laughs) but in particular places to get a good haircut, at least for men, like you can, you can go to the barbershop on base and get your high and tight, or you can go fuck yourself basically. Uh, so I was it's, like, you know it's what? the kind I, of place where I would do it myself if I were still in the military. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Um, but I've been sporting like long hair for a while, like, like, you know, down to my neck and like kind of just unruly hair mm-hmm. and I wasn't enjoying my hair. I wanted a haircut, but I was like, I just, I don't know where to go because every time I get a haircut in Alamogordo, it's like, it's never what I want. And they, they give me hassle because I don't tell them exactly like use a number three on this part of my head. And yeah. then like, uh, do your job. Like just hey, here's, my hair. here's number 48,320 through 49,854. Yes. Should be cut that's with a number I three feel. from a downward direction. <laughs> that's exactly how I feel when, <laughs> when I get a haircut here. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to wait, wait a few weeks until I get to Austin and and get my hair cut there so i found a really really fucking cool place um it is called hold on i I linked it in the show notes here it is called the good life and it was really close to the hotel it was like two blocks away from the hotel i stayed at and uh i was like you know what i'm gonna go ahead and see if they have any appointments because they highly recommend that you get an appointment so i went to their appointment site and there was only one appointment available until like uh like way way later in the day and then even then there was only like two and then i would have had to wait like two days to get a haircut or something i was like nope i'm doing this today 
And uh, when's this appointment? Oh, 30 minutes from now? Yes, I'll do that. So this place was hard to find, first of all. I did not realize that this wasn't just a normal storefront business. This was set up like a speakeasy because I passed it three times <laughs> looking for the address. Are you are, are you sure it was a speakeasy and just not something you couldn't find? <laughs> oh, no. This was very much on purpose. Uh, so I found I found the address, but there was no like, hey, here's the barbershop. It was just like one of those like uh, uh, like a, like a door to like a, like a side door for a business. So it was like kind of like a mesh, like a metal mesh. Mm. I was like, what the fuck? And I looked I looked through the mesh and I saw another door that said like um, uh, uh, utility room or electrical room or something like that. I'm like well, this is obviously fucking isn't it. So I walked up and down the street again, couldn't find the, so I went back to, to the door. I'm like, fuck this. I'm just going to try the door. So I opened the door that has the mesh. So like the outside, the street facing door, I open that up and step inside and to the left is the door that has the name of the barbershop on it. I'm like, Oh my God. So then I open that door and you have to go downstairs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is so fucking cool. And I go downstairs and it's like, like it, it's set up like an old timey barbershop, right? So it's got a lot of um, uh, displays of like, you know, old uh, haircutting equipment and things like, you know, straight razors and all right. this kind of stuff. And so I walk in and, and the first barber looks at me. He's like, um, do you have an appointment? I was like, yeah, it's with whatever his name was. Jim. And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah. He's, he's, um, he's on the other side of the wall. Um, you can go around there, but, but but if you want, go ahead and grab you something to drink. Okay. And he points at a cooler. And I look over there, and there's beers in the cooler. I was like, this is fucking amazing. <laughs> so I had a Shiner Bach while I was waiting on my haircut. And, um, yeah, so I, I sit in the seat, and the guy is like, he's like, uh, so what are we doing here? I was like, well, um, first of all, we're taking about – three quarters of this hair off. He's like, Whoa, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, like I want a short haircut now. Uh, I've been growing this for about probably a year and a half. And, uh, I want it gone. Done with it. He's like, <laughs> all right, what are you looking for? And I told him, you know, like, okay, so I want it. I want it to be like, you know, not, um, you know, whatever. I, I just gave him the basics of what I was looking for. He asked me a couple of questions, like yes or no questions. I answered those. And he's like, all right, well, let's see what we can do here. And once he cut, like he was probably like 90% of the way through the haircut, he asked me a couple other questions like, well, what do you think about this? What do you, you know, should I do this, that, whatever? I answered those questions and then he did it up and then, ta -da! it was a great haircut. I was like, this is how it's fucking done. I was so pleased. Like that was honestly one of, definitely one of my top five things of the trip. Like so fucking good. Jeez, <clears throat> that's awesome. Um, but yeah, so like as far as events go, um, we did a karaoke night that uh, had, was, uh, I mean, as far as attendance goes, was of limited success, um, mostly because I think the social distancing um, uh, like policy, not really policy, but like recommendation right. was starting to come into the mainstream. And so a lot of people didn't want to go out. Uh, but then on Saturday we had a little, little get together, uh, where we had a, a better turnout, but everybody's doing, you know, touching elbows, not, not high-fiving or shaking hands or anything. Um, so that was pretty cool. So, so how many times did Curtis like touch elbows with somebody before he just finally fucking spazzed out and hugged somebody? I didn't he, count. Cause, <laughs> cause Curtis is a hugger. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I, I'm probably in the same boat with that. Um, I, I do I do like to give hugs. Well, you know, and it's funny. This is the first time I, I actually did get to see Brian and Bonnie. And um, this is the first time I've ever seen Brian where he didn't just immediately, like, rush into my arms. <laughs> He's come, he, yeah. he did his normal thing. Oh, what's up, man? Comes running over, like, with an elbow out. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Good times, man. Uh, um, and and for W. Scott, it's one. There's 119 confirmed cases in Ohio. Yes, yes. So he um, said about 100 in the chat room, and yeah, it's 119. 
yeah, confirmed cases right now. But but yeah. um, give it an hour and it'll be different. It could be. Um, okay, so who all did you see there then? I know you saw Curtis, obviously, and you saw Dark Redeemer. Yep, uh, Dark Redeemer. Um, let's see, Lincoln Hammond, Crunchy, Waffleophagus, um, Snowshoe, Chris Ronan, Travis Tubbs. Oh, you got Snowshoe uh, and Chris Ronan to come out, huh? Yeah. yeah wow, yeah, yeah. that's that's impressive. They it's hard to get them to go anywhere that's not a like a major event. Yeah, no, not, not that they don't like them. people. They're just they're just those people that like to hang out and do their thing. Yeah, um, Pokemon Go is a thing, and yeah. Ash is into Pokemon Go, so we did some raids together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see who else. Mike TV. Um, I mentioned Brian and Bonnie, mm-hmm. uh, Trey Warren. Um, I, I feel like I'm leaving some people out. I probably am. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, Roberto uh, Villegas. Uh, um, oh, uh, Patrick, uh, Ben Franklin, like NSFW, mm-hmm. uh, Ben Franklin. Uh, he was out there. That's awesome. Um, so you, you had a good, a decent yeah. show, showing for, for crisis, uh, preemptive crisis yeah. coordination. Yeah, yeah. And it was it was weird too to to see like the the dwindling of willingness to interact socially. And uh, my last time actually going out wasn't I, I don't know if I'd consider it going out, um, but my last day actually being around people like other than Curtis uh, was spent on a compound. So <laughs> it wasn't even like interacting in public. Yeah. Did, did you go out to the the Seven Acres Wood? Not the Seven Acre Schwood, but uh, Trey Warren's got a place now that's like, let's just say in the neighborhood. Oh, okay. Um, which was pretty great. That was that was another uh, top five. Uh, went out to his place and uh, I got to drive a, uh, a an Indian company American made Jeep knockoff. I cannot remember the name of the the uh, vehicle. Uh, but uh, got the off road around his property in it. Uh, it's pretty great. Um, for those that that watch Mike TV's live stream mm-hmm. on Twitch, uh, his dog Sue, uh, the the big uh, Great Pyrenees mm-hmm. dog, looks like a fucking polar bear. Uh, looks even more like a polar bear in real life. <laughs> that thing is like waist high, if not tall. I think I think he's taller. <laughs> Uh, giant, giant dog, but what a sweetheart. Uh, but that was a, that was a really, really fun day, uh, hanging out at, at the compound. And, uh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So a good time was had, but like I said, it was, it was strange being away from home when, uh, like, uh, like the, the, the uh, what do I want to say? The, uh, temperament or the not temperament what am i saying like the condition of the country i guess is like changing yeah this is like unprecedented uh, event that's like changing society changing how we live like 9 11 i think is the last time we had something that that was like on this scale yeah oh my gosh if we have to start doing fucking like breathalyzer virus tests before we fly i want to be so pissed Hey, if they can make a breathalyzer virus test, like I'm in. Let's do that. So, like, I'm not going to the doctor. I'm just going to buy a plane ticket. It's probably cheaper. Oh, you're fucking legit there. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, if you would, uh, if you'd like to see us at further events like this, uh, maybe not during the apocalypse, but soon after, uh, cruise on over to patreoncom misery and uh, help us out there. Now, we do have a slight announcement that I, I, I released earlier this week, but. Uh, we are um, pausing our campaign, which means that uh, our patrons will not be charged in April. And we're going to keep that going for a while anyway, until the COVID thing is over. Because as I said in my email, it, it's people have limited funds to spend on Patreon. And there's some people that are cutting back on their Patreon because they they need the funds for themselves. I mean, it's, it's not the easiest of times right now. And if you're going to limit your funds on Patreon, we'd rather us take a hit on it because we do not rely on 
this on the Patreon feed for our livelihood. There are right, many yeah, who we, do. Yes, so we don't we don't need Patreon in order to pay our bills and feed our families. Right. Uh, our Patreon money goes directly back into the show uh, to buy equipment and and pay for trips and swag and things like that. Um, we can put that on pause for however many months this situation is going on. Uh, so, yep. so please stay, you know, re- maintain your patronage uh, and just know that you will not get charged. You'll still get all of the benefits, all the patron exclusives will still come to you, but you get them for free uh, just by uh, being a patron over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Right. And um, once this is kind of blown over and, and the country is financially stabilized, uh, we'll we'll go ahead and reactivate it. But for yep. right now, just know you can enjoy it for free. Yep. Because uh, if you're going to cancel one, cancel us. Like we we canceled us for you. Yes. So you, so yeah, you, don't, you don't have, have to. to. Yes, you don't. So, we canceled ourselves, so you don't have to. Yeah. So so you can go on uh, con- continue supporting the creators that actually rely on Patreon and other donation flat pl- platforms to feed their families. Like that's it's more important to us than than the 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 the, the monies we get cuz I mean we we got a little bit of with me not going to South by and South by being canceled, we still have considerable fundage <clears throat> you know, like almost 20 months worth of patron funding <laughs> in our account yeah. right now because we just yep. we don't touch it until we do big events and well it, that got canceled this year. So um, yes. yeah, stay a patron, uh, we are we're, until this all blows over and we'll give you plenty of time, plenty of warning. Uh, but yeah, until this all blows over, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be the guys that are begging you for money. So, um, support other people that re- really need the money to survive and to live. So that's where we're going to go with that. Now, yep. all that being said, Kent, you have a very, very bad pun that even Weird Al himself refused to make <laughs> um, for our game tonight, and it is my 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 Corona. Yes. So it's about <laughs> so it's about time we did this. Can I please have your attention? In the last thirty minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's game. Play with him. Play with him. My, 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 my Corona virus. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is a very simple quiz, and I I hope that you beat the hell out of the D on this one. Hmm. Uh, this I, I fully expect you to get hundred percent. I'll be disappointed uh, quite severely. Uh, but I just wanted to I wanted to give a quiz about COVID nineteen, so that um, maybe we're informing people. Okay. I don't know. Um, but if you know, I, I hope people know what's up. Um, so, so what you're saying is this is a fun way to make fun of Amos and inform our listeners of important information. Gotcha. PSA. Yes. This is PSA, Rich Misery Style. So, before I begin, RMPSA. Before I begin the quiz, I just want to refer people to CDC.gov. Like that's that's where to get information. Don't get it from fucking Facebook or any other social media. Don't get it from Fox News. Don't get it from CNN. Don't no get it from kidding. MSNBC. Go to cdc.gov. Yep. All of the information is there, and it's accurate. It's timely. And it's regularly updated as th- new things come out. Yes. It's it's such a good resource, and and it's a resource you can trust. So it's, it's such so a please. great underfunded resource because Trump is trash. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> question number one. I'm sorry, he really pissed me off today. Where did the coronavirus outbreak of 2019-2020 originate? Wuhan, China. Yes. Which is not a common symptom reported by those who have become infected? Diarrhea. Okay. (laughs) That is correct. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> diarrhea is, I'm not even going to read the choices because the other answers might be a spoiler for a later question <laughs> but uh, yeah so amazingly um, I don't know if you can see the reflection in my eyes of the quiz but um, yes so diarrhea is not a symptom of COVID-19 yay for diarrhea not being a symptom 
All right. <laughs> if you've got diarrhea, it's something else. Most likely. True or false. True or false. COVID-19 has a higher death rate toll. Or, sorry. Uh, COVID-19 has a higher death toll than the SARS outbreak of 2003. That is a good question. I'm going to say true. That feels weird to cheer for, but... SARS was uh, like 93 people, and uh, COVID is up to several thousand, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Um, oh, and a lot of people don't realize SARS was a coronavirus. Right. So SARS and MERS, if you remember, yep. uh, MERS being the uh, Middle Eastern uh, Respiratory Syndrome, something like that, Um those are both examples of coronavirus. And in fact, the official name of COVID is SARS-CoVID-19. Yes. Yep. Because yeah, because SARS stands for something. Oh my gosh. Sudden, something re- sudden acquired res- respiratory syndrome or something like that. That's something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which of these is one of the main symptoms of the virus? Vomiting, stomach pain, difficulty breathing, or headache? Difficulty breathing. Yeah. True or false? There is evidence that pets can spread the coronavirus. There was evidence of pets acquiring the coronavirus, but there has been no evidence yet of pets being a vector for the coronavirus. So false? False. That I actually don't feel bad about cheering for because yay right. that, that your dog came. There, there was evidence. Uh, anecdotal evidence that one man's seen eye dog or safe safety dog or whatever had acquired coronavirus, but that was, um, I don't know if that was ever like debunked or confirmed, uh, mm-hmm. but there have been no other reports and no other, uh, anyway, yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Like that is just that one instance, yeah. uh, very anecdotal and I don't know the result hey. of it, but there has been no evidence of any pets or animals being a vector for the, the, uh, virus since it has trans uh, since it has I don't say transcended but since it has uh, uh, crossed the species boundary into humans right yeah the only the only way that I can see my dog giving me coronavirus is if someone that's infected sneezes on my dog and then I immediately pet my dog and then lick my hand R- right but that's not a vector <laughs> transmission that is a surface transmission so correct yes yes yeah. that's still the um human um um uh, what uh, respiratory droplets uh, right. transmission so all right so next question which of these is the most important to keeping yourself healthy and protected against the novel coronavirus wearing a face mask prohibiting travel Taking antibiotics or washing your hands. Washing the damn hands, son. Hell yeah. People should be doing that anyway. Like if you if you're not washing your hands on a regular basis basis, like just wash your fucking hands. Yeah. Come on. Like this isn't a coronavirus thing. This is a flu season thing. This is a it's fucking Tuesday. Just it's just a thing. thing. Just, it's a just, just, fucking just wash do your it. fucking hands, man. Right. And as uh, Anthony Carboni and Jeff Kanata used to say, wash your goddamn thumbs. Just fucking do it. All right. <laughs> I like that. <clears throat> you can't wash your thumb without getting all your fingers. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's, that's clever. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of people will, like, will wash your hands, but then like their thumbs don't get any soap on it. Like, right. But you can't like wash. I mean, like you, I guess you could butterfly your hands to wash just your <laughs> thumbs. But you're really yeah. going to be doing this right here and using basically getting the whole exactly. thing. Exactly. So, exactly. yeah, I like that. Wash your fucking hands. All right. True or false? It is safe to receive a package from an area where the virus has been reported. I'm sorry? True or false? Oh, sorry. I was reading chat. Uh, uh, oh. Sam says, I literally hear Anthony scream that in my head every time I wash my hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and I literally replay uh, TED Talk we've now covered twice every time I dry my hands off. Yes, so. Correct. <laughs> So I hear, yes, I hear Anthony and Jeff yelling at me, wash your goddamn thumbs as I'm washing my hands. And then when I'm drying my hands, I hear that old man in the TED talk yeah. telling me to only use one towel. And I tell well, him to fucking eat shit. I'm going to use two. Well, uh, well, I don't, I don't hear the old man. I hear Richard saying, how big are your goddamn hands? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Go back about 120 episodes or something like that in RMP. Yeah. 
I think, it was, I think it was earlier than that. We just had a comment on, on episode one zero one zero one zero on YouTube. They said, ah. "What the hell is this?" or "What the heck is this?" And it, it, there was like no time code or anything else. So I watched about half the episode. Just kind of, it was fun to watch from way back then. Is because one zero one zero one zero, of course, is forty two in binary. Forty two, yes. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, just watching one from that long ago from. 200 episodes ago and i didn't see anything like overly offensive or ridiculous it's just us being stupid as we do and um yeah i, I just replied back with like i don't know us during an early show from five years ago I, like what do you what's your, what's your point anyway uh next question all right uh true or false it is safe to receive a package from an area where the virus has been reported it's true it's, it's perfectly safe Yes, an applause to that as well. I mean, so we're taking we, us in our house. We're taking the extra safety precaution of wiping everything with Lysol before we handle it if it comes in the house. But yeah, that's, all right. So that's for your us. for your next two points, we talked about shortness of breath being a symptom of mm-hmm. COVID nineteen. Mm-hmm. What are the two other primary symptoms of COVID-19 infection. Dry cough and um, fever. Yes, to both of those. And for question number 10, as kind of a freebie bonus, uh, because it's that fucking important. Because I already got the D. What is the best way to protect yourself from COVID-19? Washing your fucking thumbs. <laughs> yes, wash your goddamn thumbs. Wash your whole hand. Wash for at least thirty or uh, twenty seconds minimum with soap. Do you know why it's twenty seconds? Um, I don't know it, exactly why it's twenty seconds, but I know that it, it does. It does take a, a little bit of time for the the soap uh, molecules to attach on and break down the. Uh, the protein layer of right. viruses and bacteria. It, it comes to law of deprecating returns or theory of deprecating returns. I don't know. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, if, you, if you wash your hands very quickly in cold water, you barely affect the virus that's on your hands at all. Mm-hmm. You change that to warm or above warm water, like not hot, but you know, pretty good temperature water, uh, that increases to like 30%. If cold water with soap is like 60% eff- effective. Warm water with soap is like 70. Then hot water with soap, like hot, uh, like really hot, uh, is like 90% effective. But then you scrub. And as you scrub, the, your chances of getting the virus keep going up. But it's a it's a curve. So the longer you go, the less return you're getting out of it. And eventually, you're it's just like to washing your hands with, with really warm water with soap for 20 seconds gets like 98 and a half percent of all the virus that might be on your hands doing so yeah. for like five minutes gets you to 99 percent. so okay yeah <laughs> so that that curve right there is ridiculous like once you do 20 seconds you've pretty much done all you're gonna fucking do yeah 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 um bottom line wash your fucking hands <laughs> uh that we says emulsion baby gotta let them molecules know each other <laughs> That's right. Um, but Amos, uh, congratulations. You did, in fact, get 10 out of 10. You... Is, is, is that a first? I don't think it's a first, but it's a rarity. It's a, it's, it's a rare. Yes. Yeah. So you, you beat the hell out of the D on that one. I, I prefer a, a medium rare, but yeah, we're good. <laughs> um. Right. Yeah, so COVID-19. We've been talking mm. about COVID-19 for like probably 90% of this podcast. Yeah, about um, 39 minutes starting now. How have you been directly affected? Not not things that you hear about. How have you been affected by it? Kids are out of school. We had to go pick up all their stuff from their lockers today, and they handed it to us through a car after radio in, radioing in the name of the student. Like they had a whole system to where you only inter- oh, ever wow. interface with one person. That person had full safety gear on, you know, mask, gloves, and all that kind of stuff. Like they weren't taking any chances. Yeah. Um, we, because we stock up every year in November when my sister-in-law or December, when my sister-in-law gets her, uh, uh, her discount, we are good on normal supplies that a lot of people are panicking about. I'm not going to 
say anything because I don't want people knocking on my door. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but we, we, we are okay as far as that stuff goes. We have bought some extra food, uh, mostly frozen food and unspoilables, you know, canned canned meat and vegetables stuff like that. But I mean, no matter how much food we, we buy, it's not going to last with essentially four teenagers in the house. Um, I count the babies as one teenager. <laughs> yeah, Amber, add their ages together. Yeah, because a- Amber doesn't actually eat very much since she just turned 20 today. But like the twins, David, and those damn babies. <laughs> yeah, they like th- that pantry door has never seen so much action with everybody home. Um, I'm about to put a lock on it actually. And uh we've limited our, our contact outdoors. Uh my wife is on a two to three day week two to three day per week schedule. And basically uh she goes in on Mondays and Fridays with another floater day kind of in the middle as things go on because she, she's like, you know, third in command for a squadron or whatever. So mm-hmm. um and she does a lot of a lot of her working from home, mostly in the evenings, because she doesn't like getting up in the morning either. And certain things like that, like you know, I, we went around, we made sure we had plenty of dog food, you know. And as long as Amazon still delivers, we'll be fine on dog food because that's how we get our our, our dog food deliveries. Uh, and we broke out uh, we broke out Gloomhaven last night. We basically went through and watched the videos and read the instructions. We didn't actually play because after all that, it was like two hours in, and we were like, "Fuck." Right. I, right. I did buy a, an organizer for all the pieces, so that it, it goes that fits in the original box. That was almost as expensive as the game, but it makes it to where you can actually find shit, and it's not just big, like a forest of cardboard. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> apparently, it's a common problem with big games. And um, I did go out and buy my wife a thirty-eight and plenty of ammunition for that. Restock my ammunition for my shotguns and my nine mil. Uh, and those uh, here in Alaska, people walk around with guns uh, often anyway, just cause it's a, it's an open carry and concealed carry state. Like you don't need a license to do either one. Um, so just in case there are people knocking on my door, I don't want, I, I, I don't want to be the easy victim. Yeah. Like I'm not yeah. going to fight anybody over toilet paper, but I'll, I'll fuck you up over my kid's food. Right. right. So. Yep. Uh, so that was all. That, that's all. That's all taking place. And so it's a really nice thirty-eight too. It's like really tiny. It fits in her purse. It's got like a little sleeve. It's cute. It's it's my gun, but smaller. It's like like somebody put my gun in a dryer. Oh damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what about you, man? What what uh, what big? Oh, and we stocked up on beer. Uh, they wouldn't let me yes. swap out my keg because they won't take exchanges right now. Uh, so my keg is just sitting in, in the garage empty. However, we do have several cases of beer sitting around in the cold part of the house. Yeah. So we're, we're pretty well stocked up, but we, we tend to be anyway, like we didn't really, we did one shopping trip that was kind of like anticipatory, but that's not like we didn't go crazy. Like Mm -hmm. we're, we're always stocked up on like paper goods and uh, you know, frozen food and canned food and things like that. So, yeah, you know, stocked up on beer a little bit. I've got beer to last for three or four days. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, it depends on how crazy I get. It depends on how much, how, how, I mean, you're home for two weeks, right? So yeah, 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 I know. I know we might hit a danger zone here, um, but I do have liquor as a backup if, if absolutely needed. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, I already, already talked about being, um, home from work and the limited contact order. So we've, we've canceled our, uh, our D and D session for the week. Oh, uh, she's uh, just doing online. We were, well, so we've, we've talked about that. That's a possibility, uh, you know, do it on roll 20 or something, but yeah, we might, I mean, depending on how long this lasts, we might actually do that or we might postpone to next week, but it, it takes a little while to, to go from, from paper to roll 20. If you want to be yes. properly prepared, because you gotta, you gotta make your maps. You gotta, uh, uh, build character sheets and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So there's uh, a little bit of setup. You, you, you can't, well, it's, it's harder to ad hoc in a digital platform than it is in person. Right, right, right. So we might do that. Um, we'll see. We will see. Um, oh, I had, speaking of which I have been working very much on a new character that, uh, I think we're going to, uh, we're not going to kill off the character that I'm playing right now, but he's right. going to find, uh, an alternative adventure <laughs> and I'm going to introduce a new character uh, because the character that I'm playing right now is kind of just boring. Yeah. And I'm um, introducing a, a 
well, I'll, I'll talk about this you, probably next week. But you, uh, you know that's your fault, right? Well, a little bit. Yeah, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll go into. <laughs> we will talk about Dungeons and Dragons next week. Next week we're gonna have a. An, and, unless episode. something crazy happens, we're going to be talking about games next week. It's the the final yeah. of our tagline. So, yeah, uh, but that's that's something that actually could have been my geeky thing of the week. And instead of uh, raving about my haircut, I could have <laughs> talked about my character development, which is a it's been it's been a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so we canceled our D and D session for the week, and uh, we were going to have a house guest uh, from out of state this weekend, and um, not unfortunately so had to call that off. Yeah. Um, uh, Steph is working from home. Nice. Um, that's about it, really. Like, my personal life hasn't been affected too much. Like, the, you know, the movie theaters are closed, but I'm not sure if there's something that I was going to be rushing out to see this weekend anyway. Have, have they restricted stuff where you are? Because here uh, on Monday, the governor of, uh, not the governor, the mayor of Anchorage came out and said, starting Tuesday, at 5 p.m., all restaurants and bars, things like that, will be dying out only. And then yep. the next day, the governor came in and said, on Wednesday at 5 p.m., the whole state will be doing that. So the state of Alaska right now, as of yesterday at 5 p.m., is dining out only. Most places are just drive throughs but some places like uh, Olive Garden, things like that, you can still pick up from inside. But as far as I understand it, they are also not receiving any food. That's just a rumor I heard, but they're I don't think they're receiving... Uh, their normal food shipments, they're actually sending it to other places uh, so that they don't have... Because, I mean, if if no one goes out, like they're not going to be going through as much food as they normally would. Right, right. Um, so we had a, uh, a restriction where, like, if your seating capacity is 60, you can only have 30. Like, you have to have your your seating capacity so that, you know, allow for separation and whatnot. But, right. Because the, the recommended three to six foot uh, distance between other people or whatever. Um, but I know that some restaurants have switched to, um, uh, like drive through or, or like dine out only. And I heard somebody say that the town has gone to dine out only like no, no dining in whatsoever. But I have, I don't know if that's a, a, a city thing, a state thing. And I don't even know if it's accurate. Yeah. Um, but, um, but I know a lot of places were doing that voluntarily. Like like Taco Bell, for example, was drive through only. Uh, most things have been canceled in town. Saying Taco Bell is drive through only is almost repetitive. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, but every time I do go to the, to the Taco Bell drive through, there's like three or four cars in the in the. Yeah. Oh line. yeah. Taco Bell drive through never never stops. Yeah. I've, um, I've never just driven through the the drive through there. Yeah, but I mean, other than now, how how much are you? How much how much are you staying ahead of the news on it? Like, are you like every day when I get up, I come downstairs, I grab a Dr Pepper, uh, I load up Twitter to see what major news stories there are from the people I follow there, and then I go to uh, the John Hopkins website and the CDC just see if there's new information there and the new numbers stuff like that, and kind of track the progress of it, and then I start going into other news outlets that, um, that I find, I don't want to say less trustworthy, but less interesting. Um, uh, so my, my routine, like when I get up, I, I check out the, um, the push notifications that I get because I do get, um, like breaking news, push notifications from Apple news. Yeah. And so like, I'll see the major stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, as far as local goes, like I don't go looking for that. Uh, very often, maybe every, I don't know, three or four days or whatever. I, I well, my, lo out. my local is a little different than your local though. Your local right. is kind of El Magordo. My local is kind of Alaska because population wise, right. uh, all of Alaska is about the same as a good size city. Right. So right. Uh, yeah, that's local is, is relative in, in terms of news. I have found. Yeah, but I'm I'm trying to like not pay too much attention to it. Like I'm I'm casually aware, I guess, yeah. because like if there's something like, oh my god, the martial law has been declared. Like I'm gonna get that push notification, right. you know. Uh, so like knowing that Taco Bell went to drive through only is like not something I need to like. I don't need to know that immediately. Right. I need to know that if I decide, hmm, I kind of feel like tacos. Let me see. Like now, then I'll look. Do you, you, know. you don't, so we have a, a, a neighborhood Facebook page where people can say what's going on, where, and things like that. And I've been actually following that pretty closely because a lot of, a lot of it is here lately is 
uh, Fred Meyer just got a new shipment of canned goods or, you know, there's this going on or that going on or things like that. So the neighborhood app, the neighbor app, I guess, where people mm-hmm. share their ring videos and things like oh, that. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. That's been spiking up a little bit lately. And then the ranch neighborhood page where we check out, uh, you know, the, the other people that live in our very, very small area mm-hmm. uh, within just a, like two blocks of us is all that's in that group. And been watching that a, a bit lately because people do come uh, back from the stores stuff like that and say what they found or what they didn't find, things like that. So it's kind of like keep them. I'd rather follow that and hear eyewitness reports on what's going on around the town uh, than try to listen to the actual local news because they're just going to generalize everything. And right. I don't give a shit what's going on in Anchorage and we don't have like a Wasilla news. So, um, yeah, I've been kind of doing that. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's interesting times. It's interesting they- times. Really, really is. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm. <sighs> this is changing a lot of things. Like, look, look at the education. Like, kids are home from school. Mm-hmm. A lot of school districts are pushing uh, distance ed. either just general, yeah, either just general homeschool materials or distance edu- You know, long distance education. Like, um, my my daughter's elementary uh, school uh, is is handing out Chromebooks to students that don't have computers at home. Yep. Um, um, and yeah, and a lot of uh, like Zoom or uh, Microsoft Meeting or right, they're extending uh, their free offerings and yeah, services, yep. things like that. Yep, lots of lots of that type of stuff is going on. Uh, yeah. Our school district here isn't doing fuck all apparently, <laughs> um, but my 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 point is that like these innovations are 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 being made right now that are going to change the way we do things moving forward. Yep. It, like at a minimum, contingency planning is going to be a lot more of a thing. And then and also like I think um, some some businesses, I don't know, schools maybe, but like a lot of businesses are going to discover new best practices for, for just day to day business. Because yep. like how many businesses have said we cannot move to a work at home model, like a tele telework model and they're doing telework right now. Like how many companies are going to find that, oh, this actually worked out fine and offer that? How many of them you are going to be like, oh, you're taking vacation? Well, now we know how to telework. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I mean, that might be a positive thing. So like if you can, if you can telework and then what's to stop you from going on, quote, vacation, but also be able to work so you're not taking any leave. But you're sitting on a beach somewhere right. instead of like it's your it's your house that you're tired of looking at the same four walls, you know, right. um, I, I just think, you know, and those are just a couple of minor examples, not to mention government and, um, uh, you know, financial stuff like the, there are things that are going to come out of these next couple of months that it's going to change our society. Uh, that's why I compared it to 9-11 earlier, yeah. uh, because it's a it's a very. Um, just is, social change is happening right now because of, uh, of this particular event. Yep. Um, if you've got good stories to tell, why don't you email them to podcast at richmondmisery.com? I would love to read those and I would love to share them with the rest of our audience yeah. as well. Good, bad, just some strange shit. You want to share a tweet with us at ritual misery on Twitter? Yeah. Um, oh, I, I, I do have a, a tweet. To share. Oh, I had too many of them that were exceptionally political and anger filled. So I openly decided not to share any of those tweets this week. Um, yeah. So <laughs> damn it. So my Twitter app just, uh, is what I get for not, um, preloading. Yeah. Not preloading it. So, uh, my Twitter app is taking a shit. So a few weeks ago or a few episodes ago, I uh, shared a tweet from Brett Roundsville. Uh-huh. I don't remember what it was about the about um, his boy. It was, it was about parenting. It was about being a father or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So I didn't purposely choose another Amtrekker tweet, uh, but the tweet that I liked happened to be from Brett again. So this is what this is how it goes, guys. I just found out my wife puts two spaces after a period in work emails, and now I'm trapped in this house with her. <laughs> I laughed pretty good to that because it it always makes me think of 
of um, Steve Perry, our author friend, uh, who we've had on a couple of times. Uh, I first learned, like probably what four or five years ago, from him that two spaces after a period is no longer a thing. Mm -hmm. And I have since changed my ways to one period after, or uh, one, one, space, one after. space after a period. And it bothers me when I'm editing a document and they do the two space thing. And I like, I go, I do a search and replace of two <laughs> spaces to one space because it bothers me so much now. I'm still a two spacer. Yeah, you need to change your ways. I don't email people though, so fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! But yeah, so that was the that, that was the tweet I wanted to. Show. Um, I'm going to go with Tom Merritt. Uh, he said uh, uh, yesterday afternoon. He said, "Introverts, be kind and understanding to your extrovert friends right now." Yeah, yeah, they, they they're they're in uncharted territory right now. Uh, yep. That reminds me of a, there was a Bonnie Brushwood tweet from earlier that said, help, I'm, I'm in a house full of extroverts and I'm their only audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, keep looking out for one another. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Look out for one another and wash your fucking hands. <clears throat> all right, man. Where can people find you on Twitter? Yeah. RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter, but I'm, I'm Del Noche or Del Noche 77 pretty much everywhere else. So. Uh, if you're playing a, a mobile game, I might be on there. Look me up um, or on your social media platform of choice. Yep. Uh, I'm Ethan Kane or Ethan Kane 77 everywhere. And I want to remind everybody that Humble Bundle this week has a, a Mega Man sale. So if you're into Mega Man games and you want to play some Mega Man games on your computer, uh, stop by the Humble Bundle store. And uh, I wish I, I, I would have a link for you to save to give me eight bucks if you went, but whatever. Uh, it's just go and get it. And then those games are ridiculously hard compared to today's games because the controls are just not responsive. Telling you from experience. Uh, you can find me on, on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. And you can find, follow the show, as I said before, at Ritual Misery, R I T U A L M I S E R Y. Um, Yes, you can also join our, join the conversation on our Discord over at bit.ly slash RMP Discord. And you can find all these links and more ways to support the show at ritualmisery.com. Again, if you are a patron, please maintain your patronage. We are not going to charge uh, our patrons until a later time, which we will give you plenty of warning about. Um, go support other people that rely on that, that patronage. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we are live most Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritual misery. And thank you so much to Kid McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Um, thank you for listening or watching for Kent, for me and for you. I'm not hearing the music. There it is. <laughs> this has been your ritual misery podcast. See ya. So, so early. Both of us. <laughs> I Hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R I T U A L M I S E R Y. <laughs>